Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Five First Pages. For my second book I have chosen the Malleus Maleficarum, also known as the Hammer of Witchcraft. Written in 1486. I've skipped the introduction because that's rather boring. This book was used to um, read from and convict witches. First chapter. Treating of the three necessary condominants of witchcraft, which are the devil, a witch, and the permission of the almighty God. The title explains the essential theme, and in question and answer the writers seek to provide authority with quotation from, for rebutting arguments that the Almighty would not countenance the great conspiracy that they are to describe. Question 1. Poses. Whether the belief that there is such being as witches is so essential as a part of the Catholic faith that the obstinacy to maintain the opposite opinion manifestly savours of heresy. It is answered that such belief is indeed heresy, both in existential and civil law, and ends. This is then our proposition. Devils by their art do bring about evil effects throughout witchcraft. Yet it is true that without the assistance of some agent they cannot make any form either substantial or accidental, and we do not maintain that they can inflict damage without the assistance of some agent. But with such an agent diseases and many other human passions or ailments can be brought about, and these are real and true, I hereby say so. How these agents, or how these employments of such means can be rendered effective in cooperation with the devils, will be made clear in the following chapters. Question 2. Proceeds further to inquire whether the evil effects of witchcraft necessarily involve the cooperation of the great evil one. It allows that women, in order to bring about changes in the bodies of others, sometimes make use of certain things, which exceed our knowledge. But this is without any aid from the devil, and because these remedies are mysterious, we must not therefore ascribe them to the power of the devil, as we should ascribe evil spells wrought by witches. Moreover, witches use certain images and other strange parents, which they are, which they are wont to place under the lintels of doors of houses, or in those meadows where flock or herding, or even where men congregate. And thus they cast spells over their victims, who have oft times been known to die. But because such extraordinary effects can proceed from these images, as it would appear that the influence of these images is in pro-production of the influence of the stars over human bodies, as natural bodies are influenced by heavenly bodies, so may artificial bodies likewise be thus influenced. But natural bodies may find the benefit of certain secret but good influences. Therefore artificial bodies may receive such influence. Hence it is plain that... <laughs> it is plain. Oh, good! Seriously, this book... Who wrote this crap? Who condemned witches with this thing? Anywho, hence it is plain to those who perform works of healing may well perform them by means of such good influences, and this has no connection at all with an evil power. Moreover, it would seem that most extraordinary and miraculous events come to pass by the working of the powers of nature. After discussion it concludes that the Catholic truth is this, that to bring about these evils which form the subject of discussion, witches and devils always work together, and that in so far as these matters are concerned, one can do nothing without the aid and assistance of the other. And later proceeds, we must especially observe that this heresy, witchcraft, not only differs from all other heresy in this, that not merely by a tacit compact, but by a compact which is exactly defined and expressed, it blasphemes the Creator and endeavours to the utmost profane Him and to harm His creatures. And all other simple heresies have made no open compact with the devil, 
No compact that is either tacit or exactly, exactly expressed. Although their errors and misbeliefs are directed to be attributed to the father of error and lies. Moreover, witchcraft differs from all other harmful and mysterious arts in this point, that of all superstition it is es essentially the vilest and the most evil and the worst. Therefore it derives its name from doing evil and from blaspheming the true faith. Question 3 to 5 concern themselves with preliminary consideration of whether children can be generated by incubi and succubi, devils in male or female guise. It rehearses biblical authority, nothing incidentally. As to that of St. Paul in 1 Corinthians XI, a woman ought to have covering her head because of the angels. Many Catholics believe that because of the angels refers to incubi. It explains that the reason that devils turn themselves into incubi or succubi is not for the cause of pleasure. Since a spirit has not flesh and blood, but chiefly it is with his intention that through the vice of luxury they may work a twofold harm against men, that is, in body and in soul, that so men may be more given to all vices. And there is no doubt that they can know under which stars the semen is most vigorous, and that men so conceived will always be perverted by witchcraft. It answers like this the suggestion that devils cannot generate children. First, that generation is affected by the formative virtue which exists in semen released from a living body, and that because the body assumed by devils is not of such a sort, therefore, etc., the answer is clear, that a devil deposits naturally formative semen in its power place, etc. Secondly, it may be argued that semen has no power of generation, except as long as the heat of life is retained in it, and that this must be lost when it is carried great distances. The answer is that devils are able to store the semen safely, so that its vital heat is not lost or even that it cannot evaporate so easily on account of the great speed at which they move by reason of superiority of the mover of the things moved. There is question of by which devils of the considerable hierarchy that the operators of incubus and succubus are practised, and the conclusion is that, but as among the good angels nothing can be without order, so among the bad all is disorder, and therefore they all indifferently follow these practices. Questions 6 to 9 proceed to detailed discussion of the various effects on the generative processes supposed to result from the evil conjunction of witches with the devil, and affecting male virility. These are the sorts of passages normally confined to the decent obscurity of a learned language, which so horrified 18th and 19th century scholars. Yet they were not the result of a monkish predisposition of to nastiness. The phenomena described are constant in human experience. In discussing the castration complex, for example, Contemporaries are dealing with one of the most frequent examples of habitation. The inquisitors were men of the world, writing for other men of the world about observed symptoms. We today look for the causes of these symptoms and try to treat them, often by psychiatry. They knew, they thought the causes and sought to treat them by punishment. Here in Translator's English is a list of the questions. Question 6. Concerning witches who copulate with devils, why is it that women are chiefly addicted to evil superstitions? Question 7. Whether witches can sway the minds of men to love or hatred? Question 8. Whether witches can habitate the powers of generation or obstruct the venereal act? Question 9. 
where the witches may work some prestidigatory illusion, so that the male organ appears to be entirely removed and separated from the body. There is no question that the greater number of the phenomena described were due to natural causes, which would now be subject to medical treatment. In so far as some were due to malevolence, it can be agreed that the practitioners of a fertility cult would be specially equipped to affect the generative process of their victims, either by drugs or suggestion. They could in either of these ways affect either potence or impotence, but the inquisitors were less interested in aphrodisiacs than birth prevention. In question six, the Malayas unleashes the abuse of women, which is characteristic of much medieval writing. As for the question, why a great number of witches is found in the fragile feminine sex than among men, it is indeed a fact that it were idle to contradict, since it is accredited by actual experience, apart from the verbal testimony of credible witnesses, and without in any way detracting from a sex in which God has always taken great glory, that his might would be spread abroad. Let us say that various men have assigned various reasons for this fact, which nevertheless agree in principle. Wherefore it is good for the admonition of women to speak of this matter, and it has often been proved by experience that they are eager to hear of it so long as it's, as it's set forth with discretion. Some learned men propound this reason that there are three things in nature, the tongue, an ecclesiastic, and a woman, which know no moderation in goodness or vice. And when they exceed the bounds of their condition, they reach the greatest heights and lowest depths of goodness and vice. When they are governed by a good spirit, they are most excellent in virtue. But when they are governed by an evil spirit, they indulge the worst possible vices. The book then goes on to quote various authorities proceeding in these terms. Now the wickedness of women is spoken of in Ecclesi Ecclesiasticus 25. There is no head above the head of a serpent, and there is no wrath above the wrath of a woman. I had rather dwell with a lion and a dragon than to keep house with a wicked woman. And among much which in that place proceeds and follows about the wicked woman, he concludes, All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Therefore St. John Chrysostomos says on the text it is not good to marry saint matthew xix what else is a woman but a foe to friendship an unescapable punishment a necessary evil a natural temptation a desirable calamity a domestic danger a delectable derritment an evil of nature painted with the fair colours therefore if it be a sin to divorce her when she ought to be kept, it is indeed a necessary torture. For either we com commit adultery by divorcing her, or we must endure daily strive. Cicero, in his second book of the Rhetorics, says, The many lusts of men lead them into one sin, but the one lust of women leads them into all sins. For the root of all women's vices is avarice. And the Seneca says, in his tragedies, um, a woman either loves or hates, there is no third grade, and the tears of a woman are a deception, for they may spring from true grief, or they may be a snare. When a woman thinks alone, she thinks evil. This later continues, all witchcraft comes from carnal lust, which is in women insatiable. See Proverbs 30. There are three things that are never satisfied. Yeah, a fourth thing which says not. It is enough that it is the mouth of the womb. Wherefore, for the sake of fulfilling their lusts, they consort even with devils. More such reasons could be brought forward. But the understanding is 
sufficiently clear that it is no matter for wonder that there are more women than men found infected with the heresy of witchcraft. And in consequence of this, it is better to be called the heresy of witches than of wizards, since the name is taken from the more powerful party. And the blessed be the higher who has so far preserved the male sex from so great a crime. For since he was willing to be born and to suffer for us, therefore he has granted men this privilege. After this partial exemption, uh, the, uh, the diatribe continues. And touching this, we may say that is known by experience that these women satisfy their filthy lusts not only in themselves, but even in the mighty ones of the age. And whatever state and condition caused by all sorts of witchcraft, the death of their souls through the excessive infatuation of carnal love, in such a way that for no shame or persuasion can they desist from such acts. And through such men, which the witches will not permit any harm to come to them, either from themselves or from great others, once they have them in their power. They arises, there arises the great danger of the time, namely the extermination of the faith, and in this way do witches every day increase. All this may sound depressing nonsense enough, especially to those who recall the romantic picture of a woman in the Middle Ages conjured up by the stories of the, the jongleurs or the cult of the Virgin Mary, which flourished, which flourished together with those innumerable and attractive female saints. Yet it is representative of the whole stream of ascetic repugnance for women which stretches through ecclesiastic ecclesiastical thought and writing from the early from the earliest fathers downward well i must say those people they really hated the girls and here you conclude the five first pages of the malaeus maleficarum hammer of witches Written originally by Jacobus Sprenger and Heinrich Kramer.